cops out there. There's this thing called First Amendment auditing. Stop calling for it. They videotape you from public. It's not suspicious. It's not illegal. We want the same thing. I see a lot of issues and I talk about it. I can't be that we're the, we're the blue and we're the heroes. I can't do that um, simply because we there's a lot of laundry that we need to clean. Who would have thought that a First Amendment auditor and a, a <laughs> police <laughs> officer and a police officer would be having a civil discussion, you know, for the world to see? What's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Today's video is very special, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys. So I am extremely appreciative and very excited to be speaking with my guest matt thornton um matt you want to introduce yourself to everybody oh my matt thornton i'm uh i, I learned from you uh watch some of your videos and, and uh we kind of met by by chance and mm. um i like to be outspoken and, and kind of try to uh, think out of the box and yeah. i'm a police officer been a police officer for 18 years here I'm a CEO of a nonprofit that, that's really successful here. I, I reach out to underprivileged youth. I teach them about uh, life, about God, about uh, um, different things and uh, helping them get better. Great, great. So I guess the first thing, the reason why we came into any sort of communication is because I was scrolling through uh, TikTok and your video on, the, your viral video, I, la I think last time I checked, it had like uh, over 2 million views on it. Uh, it yeah. was regarding First Amendment auditing, and um, uh -huh. you know, I'll, I'm going to put in a clip right here. Okay, cops out there, there's this thing called First Amendment auditing. Stop calling for it. They videotape you from public. It's not suspicious. It's not illegal. You should act like we're on camera anyway. They do not have to identify themselves. They are not breaking the law. Stop embarrassing us and escalating these situations. Please, chuck up the deuce or say tag me and move it along. I love you, brothers and sisters in blue. But you're making us look bad. This is the reason why I love the First Amendment auditors. They're so effective at identifying and outing an egotistical and bully cop. The law really does need to keep us in check as well as the citizens. The good-hearted, humble, solid cops will understand this and they'll ride with me. All the power-hungry goofs will hate me. And you'll see by these comments they're about to put down here. So take care. Love you guys. So basically... What made you make that video? And did you were you surprised of how many views it got and the the amount of engagement you got on it oh that's a crazy story man. i get i get a friend i i, I work with this uh guy from texas he, he helps out my he, he runs a church helps run a church in texas and he like kind of keeps up with my social media stuff and he's like man matt he texts me you know you got a, a video that's viral and he sends it to me i had no clue <laughs> i'm just sitting at home one night and i'm like look on it and this thing's got like a million some views i'm like what and um yeah it just kind of happened I, it all came about, um, I've been watching the uh, First Amendment Auditor videos for quite a while. Yeah. I was uh, I was pretty intrigued by them because I never understood why there was so much drama and so much uh, unprofessionalism coming from our side and why did it keep happening and happening and happening. And um, it just kind of was, I had this fascination with, with why the mentality of the officer is to Number one, just be so condescending. And number two, like misquote the actual law. So it, it really it, it really fascinated me. So that's why I kind of spouted about the first amendment auditors, because when it's done properly, it, it's it's the perfect tool to keep an officer in check, kind of like in a, uh, hold them accountable, because mm -hmm. we are accountable to the people. We work for you guys. Like the, the citizens pay us. And that's one thing that that it, it's like so bad in our profession to say, but I am an employee of of citizens. Period. We so I, I hold I hold officers accountable, and I will often speak about it. So I, I just yeah. felt I did that video. Of just it was kind of just a spur of the moment thing. I get breaks at work, and I just I, I kind of got fun, have fun with TikTok, and I'll just look in the camera and say it, it takes me ninety seconds, and I'll chop it up later and put it on. So it's something I talked about. I never thought anyone would even see. Yeah, I I, I loved how you said you know. It's not suspicious. It's not a crime. You know, you cannot get their ID. I, I love the video, man. I, I absolutely loved it because you were speaking truth. And like I want to touch on it from my side is that you're right. It needs to be done effectively. I never claim to be perfect. I don't believe anybody is except for 
you know who, but oh, you know, you know, it needs to be handled in a way that because I think it defeats the purpose. Because if you're over there, you're let's be real. Police officers have the benefit of the doubt in every situation, right? They have the mm -hmm. benefit of the doubt. They have the law. They have the criminal justice system, not necessarily the law, but they have the criminal justice system on their side. So any way that I'm making myself look, you know, if I'm making myself look in a, in a unsavory way and I'm coming off as antagonistic, antagonistic, or, you know, I'm, that I'm trying to get a reaction out of them, that's going to be held against me. And because mm -hmm. I'll tell you the truth, Matt. You know, I, I try and be as polite as possible. I don't curse. I don't, you know, raise my voice. I'm very well, I was like, super yeah. impressed by yours. When you yeah. can't do it like I'm, perfect as anyone as I see it. Thank like, you, man. I appreciate it. that. I try and, and and I've been and for filming, I've been I've been arrested three or four times now. So it's kind of, you know, it's it's either a disorderly conduct, which I like to call contempt of cop. Us in the community call it contempt of cop, a disorderly conduct. Um, you know, different things of that trespassing. Things like that. And what I never understood was, is where is the crime? Who's being hurt? What what property is being stolen or damaged or what? Why? I think our freedom in this country is super important for some, my freedom, for anyone's freedom to be, be taken away because you don't necessarily like what I'm doing, even though it's completely legal. That's a yeah. problem. That's yeah. a problem. And, and and it, it all comes down to it's simple law. I mean, Terry versus, Terry versus Ohio says you, I have to be able to say that you're doing something wrong in order to stop you like that. And I'm a yeah. big freedom guy. Like, I, I think that this is a free country. You know, my granddaddy, my, my dad, are like four of my uncles fought for, uh, cousins too, that have been overseas. Like, we should be able to walk down the street and expect not to be stopped for, unless it's a lawful reason. And um, I'm just huge. And I'm like, man, you're walking on a public sidewalk. You can film whatever you want. I mean, that's been yeah. established. A lot of these guys got this Patriot Act all skewed. Um, but I believe a lot of that was, if you can correct me too, because I haven't studied this that as much, but I've, I've kind of looked into it. As far as the Supreme Court goes, that the cameras aren't suspicious. You can see, your eyes can see it. You can film exactly. it. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not suspicious at all. And, you know, I, I talk to a lot of law enforcement officers like yourself and, you know, behind the scenes. Um, and they have told me that, you know, ever since 9-11, you know, police officers have started to change. Law enforcement started to change because now everybody wants to become, you know, militarized. You know, they're showing up to work in BDUs and they think that, you know, they're over here in Afghanistan, but they, they didn't go to Afghanistan. They're they're here and they, we're not enemy combatants. We're, we're people and we're the people that they're supposed to serve. <laughs> I'm not at war. That's what I always say. Yeah. Yeah. Militaristic mindset. I put another one up about the militaristic mindset that ruffled a lot of feathers. But I know I I'm watch not, all your videos. <laughs> I'm not at war with anybody. I, I this is these are the same people. I was this same person my whole life. I grew up in the neighborhood. I was there. I'm not at war with any of these people. Yeah, um, I, 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 I had I had seen a I had seen a TikTok that you had said. I thought this I found this interesting that you grew up hating law enforcement. That's how yeah, you grew absolutely. up with that. You grew up hating law enforcement. And now you are, you have been a law enforcement officer for 18 years. Uh -huh. How did you, how did you go from hating the law enforcement and why did you hate law enforcement at the time? And how did you go to being law enforcement? Oh, I, I hated them. Bad interactions. I mean, there's cops. I remember when I was 13, 14 years old, um, you never forget a bad cop interaction. A cop talking so bad to me, so disrespectful to me for no reason at all. I didn't do anything wrong. Um, I was part of an illegal stop that took place in a, in a big city where I was at, um, car toss, no, no PC. And I know all the rules now. I know how illegal it was. Um, I was searched for no reason just because of who I was with. Um, there's been another incident where I was stopped illegally. That was a total bogus stop. Um, so I know, I know what it feels like to be on the other side of that. So that in a long, I'm 46 years old and Rodney King incident happened when I was a junior in high school. And that kind of molded a lot of my thoughts too, because um, that was, I don't know how old you are, but that was uh, that was the George Floyd of my generation, except they yeah. didn't kill him, but they, they basically got away with beating this guy half to death. And it yeah. just seemed like, like it was, and I was a rebellious kid and I didn't like authority. So I just hated the police. And yeah. um, it wasn't until I was older. Um, I had a criminal record. I got caught with a pistol when I was 21. Um, okay. Luckily I got the felony dropped down. Uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't a, a, a nice kid. I was really hateful, yeah. but it wasn't until I was old. I was 29 when I got hired. It was only because I had worked so hard 
for a decade of my life. Um, my record was clean. I didn't get in any more trouble. And two of my best friends became cops. And I'm like, you know what? That's an upgrade in pay. Um, and I was asking questions on how to do it. <laughs> I still didn't like them. I, when, when I, even when I got hired, I just did it for, for a job. I barely passed high school. So um, I, some, for some unknown reason, my city took me. Yeah. And, um, and then, and, when, and, I got, you know, when I got in, well, go ahead. No, and I was just about to say, sorry to interrupt you. I, I was about to say that, you know, that's the best decision you made for your community, you know, for law enforcement in general, because now that you have such a, you know, your followings growing on TikTok, you know, you have a YouTube account, you know, I think it's great. And I think that you can become a positive force in help bridging the gap between law enforcement and the public, because that's what we uh -huh. need. I have honestly, when I saw your video and I've started watching all your videos, I have never seen a law enforcement officer speak on the things you speak on. And I want to make it clear. You're not just bashing law enforcement off. You are one. You know, that's not what you're doing. You're just speaking the truth. You're, you're, you're seeing uh -huh. injustice. You're seeing injustice. You're seeing this. Uh, you call it an e uh, egotistical uh, mind frame, right? They're egotistical cops. Yeah. That's, that's the word mm -hmm. they use. And um, I couldn't agree more. You know, it's it's not it's not about. You know, some some cops, some law enforcement officers let the power get to their head. And it's about serving your community and building relationships. I'm sure that you've never, you know, a lot of things officers like to say is officer safety. I did it for officer safety. I'm sure you being de-escalation, in my opinion, is the number one tool for officer safety. Because, you know, you go in there and you escalate a situation. You don't know who you're dealing with at that point. You uh -huh. don't know what, what's going to happen. So if you yes. want like to talk about how do you feel about de-escalation and using it in your career i think that that whole officer safety thing we hide behind that a lot way too much it's so subjective like i can look at you right now and say you know what he's got a hoodie on he, his left eyebrow just raised in a matter of that he he may be uh thinking of something and his 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 hand is balled up and he's he's cocked to the right i can make up or, or say or articulate why i'm in danger in, in so many subjective ways and i think it's been it gets taken advantage of and yeah I, I cannot say I'm, I work in a dangerous city. Like people, people, I get roasted a lot because my city's small, but they don't understand the the, the makeup of Chicago and where I'm at. We're we're a makeup of a bunch of small cities together, and those cities are violent as is, is is just about as violent as any big city. Period. We have shootings sure. every day in my city. Um, yeah. So, but I I can honestly say I'm trying. Like I can't hide behind. Well, I was in fear for my life, um, just because. Uh, I can't see somebody's hands or just because you can, I guess my point is you can articulate that and it's been, it's too subjective and you can mold it in any, any way Instead of just seeing something, summing up if it's a threat. And then from there, de-escalating that it all starts off with how you, you the first two seconds that you introduce yourself to somebody, it gets, it starts with de-escalation. And, and I think we, a lot of these, the, the mindset was so skewed when I started, I was shocked. Um, how they teach you, uh, a lot of things need to start with the training in the academy. Um, yeah, I've seen some videos. Like, oh my gosh, I've seen, I've seen some videos that you that you've talked about it, and you had said something to the effect of that they want you to have um, a mentality of control and authority over people, and you wanted to show compassion, and that your instructor uh -huh. at the time had said, you know, to the effect of, you know, you're gonna be a bad cop or not an effective cop yeah. because you want to show people compassion i thought that was I, I think that some of the things you say on on your videos are you know very enlightening to people an ordinary person like me i deal with law enforcement probably more than the average person but it's enlightening even to me because it's like that's what they're instilling into law enforcement officers from yeah. from from the from the get-go get -go, like right from yeah, the start I, I have a huge problem with with the way I understand our job is 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 dangerous and we big cops sure. do get hurt um but they are the way that we are trained when i was uh, when i was uh, in training was kind of shocking because it was almost as if they're training you that everybody whose hands you can't see don't matter what you're doing they're 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 a, they're a deadly threat and you have to treat as such it's almost like they make you a bunch of paranoid people and when you when you mix that with uh, a lot of cops when they get hired, they have no street smarts. I mean, these are, a lot of these kids are from suburbia. They've never even talked to a gang member in their life. And you, you just instill that these people are your enemy and they're dangerous and they're going to kill you. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Instead of just, a lot of that training needs to just 
be thrown out and started over. I think we need to rebuild that, in my honest yeah. opinion. Yeah, for sure. De-escalation for sure. I, and, and understand, uh, uh, understand that, that nobody is your enemy. I mean, I, I have the best relationships with, with some of our most dangerous people because they see me as a human, and I've proven that. Um, yeah. But they don't see the, the, the militaristic mindset and being an officer, it doesn't work. The video that you put put up that I think goes well with this is that you put a video of an officer getting in um, a gentleman's face and he mm -hmm. was like, go, go ahead and touch me. Go ahead and touch me. Go ahead and touch me. And you said, you know, we need to stop the intimidation tactics because you had said that, you know, you, what you want is for him to touch you so you can arrest him and take his freedom yeah. away from him. And, you know, that's unprofessional. It's unprofessional conduct. And, and if you really have that short of a fuse and you have that little self-control, you don't need to have a badge. Mm -hmm. I've been saying that from, from the beginning of my career. Like, well, but the, the scary, and we could, that's a whole other show that we get into is, is mm -hmm. how they're protected. The union stuff. Yeah, like, the union is scary. It, Very scary. Oh, I, and okay. I use another, I talked about another video. Like if, if you, if I was a dentist and I pulled the wrong teeth like 15 times and I still have a job, like it's ridiculous. A dentist wouldn't have, he wouldn't be a dentist anymore. After the first one, like that, that, that it, that's why I, I love what you guys do. It exposes who is who, and um, yeah. it's unacceptable. It, it, the camera brings out. It, it, it's so funny to me that the camera brings out who you really are. I've noticed <laughs> from doing this, you know, for the last year, you know, people who have a problem with the camera being on them, it's because there's something wrong with them internally that they feel ashamed that a camera's on them, you know? Because mm -hmm. I don't care who's recording. The, the government's recording us, and this is the ultimate, you know, uh -huh. irony of it all. We're being recorded everywhere we go by the government. But the minute uh -huh. we pull out a camera to record the government, it becomes a problem. The, the, these conversations are what are needed. Like, we, we this, this country's been, become so divisive that we just want to scream at each other. Nobody wants to sit talk. And I totally get what you do. I totally, and, and, I, and I was from the bottom of my head, Police, we need to do better. Period. Yep. Uh, uh, and and that's all I'm saying. And and I'm not saying I'm perfect or holier than anybody. But I understand. I I, I can I can honestly say I've never violated anybody's rights. I've I've been a good officer. I've been solid. And I've uh, I just want to see us do way better. And and a lot of the videos that you see is just like, wow, why does this keep happening? I don't get it. Uh, it's it's a good question to ask for sure and uh you know maybe one day we won't have to ask it anymore because there'll be some mm -hmm. accountability and yeah, well, that, you know that, the, that, that's, that's the goal yeah that, that is the goal and with not just people on my side but you know police officers like yourself who are mm -hmm. you know who have the courage to speak truth and freedom and to stand up for what they believe in you know maybe it would right now i feel like you know you do something bad and they cover for you you know it, maybe it'll be to the point one day where you do something bad and there's so many good cops around that they're like, you know, put your hands behind your back, right? Yeah. Because an officer yeah. does, you're not above the law. If you break the law, you should be arrested. All right, guys. So if you want to watch the full 40 minute unedited conversation between myself and officer Matt Thornton, you can do that right now by heading over to my second channel, People's News Network, News for the People, by the People. The link will be in the description below, as well as the comment section. I am extremely excited to be starting this new channel and embarking on this new journey with you guys. Long Island Audit is not going anywhere, but I have big plans for People's News Network, and they involve all of you. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed and you have bell notifications turned on. I'll see you guys over there. Peace. Really appreciate you, man. I'm a big supporter of what you do. I hope your platforms from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, I hope you become the the biggest voice of change out there. And I hope more law enforcement officers just like yourself start, you know, standing up and speaking the truth. And, um, you know, just it's it's helps what you're doing is you're bridging the gap and it's great. You know, mm -hmm. who would have thought that a First Amendment auditor and a, a police <laughs> officer <laughs> and a police officer would be having a civil discussion, you know, for the world to see and that's change that's change i don't think i've ever seen it before you know this is a first i think you know between our two communities and you know there, there's going to be the sad part is matt is that there's going to be people who you know bash me for speaking to a police officer there's going to be some people who bash you for speaking to a first amendment auditor and we're just people we're people who care about our communities and that's what the 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 people who 
have such hate. I always say they have hate in their heart. These people just have hate in their heart. You know, and mm-hmm. the only you got to get rid of that. I tell them, listen, get rid of that hate in your heart because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not. Look, I'm speaking to a police officer. We're having a great conversation. I had great conversation with him via text. Like, there's nothing wrong. I support him and I support what he's doing. And, you know, we have to come together. We need to put down our pride and our egos and come together so that way we can actually affect some real change. And exactly. for that matter, exactly, right? <laughs> the division so in this country is, is, is you can't, you, you have to have what you would call uncomfortable conversation. This is going to be uncomfortable for a lot of people, but it's sure. okay because it's all love, man. We care about each other and we care about our what, what we stand for and um, we can do it civilly. Not everybody exactly. has to agree with us. We do it civilly and we talk. Exactly. And 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 for, for, for those out there that are watching and, you know, you might not agree with, I don't see, again, a reasonable person, I don't see how they don't agree with your with your logic and what you're saying. And, you know, and I know it's not just, you know, you're, 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 you're a police officer and you stand up for police officers too. Mm-hmm. It's, I know it's not like you're just speaking against police officers. I've seen your video. No, not at all. It goes, not at all. It goes, back, it goes back and forth. And I, and I see it. You just speak what you speak your mind and you speak your truth. And that's mm-hmm. that's commendable. And again, I I from you know I've called out people who you know do First Amendment audits, and you know they're following people around. They're you know trying to gauge for a reaction, and you know using foul language and things like that. Yeah, you have freedom of speech, but you know as a responsible adult, you should responsibly use that freedom of speech because mm-hmm. it's not. I wouldn't want somebody's that that officer you're speaking to. That's somebody's brother. That's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter, somebody's cousin. Like I wouldn't want anyone in my family member be, uh, who's in law enforcement being treated that way just for no reason. So, you know, I like to look at it from both sides. And I receive a lot of backlash for that too. But I, I, I've grown a lot. Speaking the truth and really, you know, sticking to what you believe in, I you're going you're gonna to grow, man. You're going to grow because people really respect that. I see it in your comment section. And I really appreciate you coming on to talk to me. I won't take up any more of your time. I know we've been here for a little bit, but it was great talking to you. (laughs) It was great talking to you. I hope we can have another chat soon. Oh, yeah. I hope we can get to have another chat soon. Oh, of course. Of course, man. Just hit me up. You got got my contact now, man, anytime. All right. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate you for coming on, man. God bless. Thank you, brother. God bless you as well. If you enjoyed the conversation I just had with Officer Matt Thornton, be sure to hit the like button so that way as many people as possible can see this video. We are trying to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the public, and I believe that this video helps contribute to that goal. Also, go show Officer Thornton some love on his social media, Instagram, TikTok. All of it will be in the description below. Let him know LIA sent you. The things that he's talking about, it takes courage. So let's show him some love. Let's support him. If you want him to come and do a live, make sure you leave that in the comment section below. We'll do a little Q&A. Hopefully, he'll be willing to do that. I'm sure he won't have a problem. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island Audit. Peace.